This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Kara Schallenberg. Letters of Two Brides by Honoré de Balzac. Letter 35. The Same to the Same. Marseille, July. I am ashamed to think how my sudden flight will have taken you by surprise. But since I am above all honest, and since I love you not one bit the less, I shall tell you the truth in four words. I am horribly jealous. Philippe's eyes were too often on you. You used to have little talks together at the foot of your rock, which were a torture to me, and I was fast becoming irritable and unlike myself. Your truly Spanish beauty could not fail to recall to him his native land, and along with it Marie Heredia, and I can be jealous of the past, too. Your magnificent black hair, your lovely dark eyes, your brow, where the peaceful joy of motherhood stands out radiant against the shadows which tell of past suffering, the freshness of your southern skin, far fairer than that of a blonde like me, the splendid lines of your figure, the breasts on which my godson hangs, peeping through the lace like some luscious fruit. All this stabbed me in the eyes and in the heart. In vain did I stick cornflowers in my curls, in vain set off with cherry-coloured ribbons the tameness of my pale locks. Everything looked washed out when René appeared, a René so unlike the one I expected to find in your oasis. Then Philippe made too much of the child, whom I found myself beginning to hate. Yes, I confess it, that exuberance of life which fills your house, making it gay with shouts and laughter. I wanted it for myself. I read a regret in Macumer's eyes, and, unknown to him, I cried over it two whole nights. I was miserable in your house. You are too beautiful as a woman, too triumphant as a mother, for me to endure your company. Ah, you complained of your lot. Hypocrite, what would you have? Lestrade is most presentable. He talks well. He has fine eyes, and his black hair, dashed with white, is very becoming. His southern manners, too, have something attractive about them. As far as I can make out, he will, sooner or later, be elected deputy for the Boucher du Rhone. In the chamber he is sure to come to the front, for you can always count on me to promote your interests. The sufferings of his exile have given him that calm and dignified air, which goes half-way, in my opinion, to make a politician. For the whole art of politics, dear, seems to me to consist in looking serious. At this rate, Macumer, as I told him, ought certainly to have a high position in the state. And so, having completely satisfied myself of your happiness, I fly off, contented, to my dear Chantepleur, where Philippe must really achieve his aspirations. I have made up my mind not to receive you there without a fine baby at my breast to match yours. Oh, I know very well I deserve all the epithets you can hurl at me. I am a fool, a wretch, an idiot. Alas, that is just what jealousy means. I am not vexed with you, but I was miserable, and you will forgive me for escaping from my misery. Two days more, and I should have made an exhibition of myself. Yes, there would have been an outbreak of vulgarity. But in spite of the rage gnawing at my heart, I am glad to have come, glad to have seen you in the pride of your beautiful motherhood, my friend still, as I remain yours in all the absorption of my love. Why, even here at Marseilles, only a step from your door, I begin to feel proud of you, and of the splendid mother that you will make. How well you judged your vocation! You seem to me born for the part of mother, rather than of lover, exactly as the reverse is true of me. There are women capable of neither, hard-favoured or silly women. A good mother and a passionately loving wife have this in common, that they both need intelligence and discretion ever at hand, and an unfailing command of every womanly art and grace. Oh, I watched you well, need I add, sly puss, that I admired you too. Your children will be happy, but not spoilt, with your tenderness lapping them round, and the clear light of your reason playing softly on them. Tell Louis the truth about my going away, but find some decent excuse for your father-in-law, who seems to act as steward for the establishment, and be careful to do the same for your family, a true Provencal version of the Harlow family. Philippe does not know why I left, and he will never know. If he asks, I shall contrive to find some colourable pretext, probably that you were jealous of me. 
Forgive me this little conventional fib. Goodbye. I write in haste, as I want you to get this at lunch time, and the postillion who has undertaken to convey it to you is here, refreshing himself while he waits. Many kisses to my dear little godson. Be sure you come to Chantepleur in October. I shall be alone there all the time that Macumer is away in Sardinia, where he is designing great improvements in his estate. At least that is his plan for the moment, and his pet vanity consists in having a plan. Then he feels that he has a will of his own, and this makes him very uneasy when he unfolds it to me. Good-bye. End of letter 35 Read on August 30th, 2007, in Oceanside, California.